Hello, dear friends. I didn't plan to share anything today, but I just thought I'd sh share a little real personal and just be really raw and honest with something that came up last night. Um, I've got my husband's big, thick panther's coat on this morning because it's cold here in North Carolina and the USA. Um... Let's see here. All right. So something came up with uh, one of my very close family members. I mean, about as close as you can get. And he called me and he was upset and crying and something going on. And he'd been not physically hurt, but emotionally hurt by another person. And... This has happened before. And the Lord has really been walking me through a process of how to deal with things like this. And I thought, maybe some, well, I know somebody else could be going through it. When you've got a, somebody you love and you're close to, and somebody hurts them in whatever way, does them wrong, is nasty to them, don't isn't our tendency to just rush to our loved one, friend, whatever it might be, comfort and console them, uh, grieved by what they're going through. And our tendency is to go to the Lord fiercely on their behalf, which is wonderful. But over the course of a year or so, maybe more, with this kind of thing I'm talking about, this example, the Lord has really stretched me a lot about also coming to Him on behalf of the offender, the one that did wrong, that one that hurt our family member. Maybe we might call them the enemy in this case. That's so hard to do. I've, there's been times I've said, Lord, I cannot pray for that person. I can't do it. I do not have the wherewithal. I don't have the mercy. I don't have the love. I don't have the forgiveness. I don't have it in me right now to do. Lord, please help me. Because we see in His Word that we are to forgive. We see that we are to repay with a blessing those that do evil or do wrong against us. Um, all these kind of things. But that doesn't mean we're just right off the bat able to do it. Just because we read a certain scripture, we see clearly what we're to do. How can we do it unless the Lord helps us? He's the one changing our heart, changing the way we think, giving us the ability to adhere to that word. He's the one that helps bring about the change that's needed. So I was just pleading with the Lord. Lord, please help me. Help me to see this situation. Help me to see that person that I'm so upset with right now. Help me to see it from your perspective. My perspective is limited. I do not know the heart of of that, what I might call the enemy. I do not know their intentions. I don't know why they did what they did. And, you know, the Lord also has shown me a lot about being impartial. We can read and, and see that he was he's so impartial. And he does not show favoritism. And that's something that comes along to play in this. Lord, how? Can I truly, with all my heart, come to you on behalf of that enemy, so-called, the same that I'm coming to you on the behalf of my loved one, that I think uh, got done wrong? How do I do that? I can't do that, Lord. I need your help. And there's a period of waiting. There's a, There might be a period of feeling like we failed in that area. 
But just keep going to the Lord and crying out for help on how to deal with these situations. It might be with your spouse. You know, it could be anybody and anything. These things aren't happening by coincidence. Nothing is by coincidence in our walk with the Lord. There is a lesson to be learned. There is. Um, he uses all things for our good. He's teaching us and making us to be more like Him in all ways. In all ways. And so when this happened last night, like I said, I've been walking through a process. And I don't, you know, I want to be very humble about it. And recognize anything good that comes from me is from Him. You know, I know who Misty is. I've lived with her for years. And I know the human nature. You know, I know that the heart is wicked above all else. And who can understand that? And that's, you know, what the Lord gives us is another way to go in all ways. Rather than our own set, just inherent nature of selfish and so selfish of wanting to be praised and adored and appreciated, wanting to make a name for ourselves, wanting to be some important somebody, uh, thinking we're right, you know, thinking we're better than somebody else. All these are the human natural ways that we all deal with. But when the Lord transforms us, and He does daily in our minds, renewing the way we think and changing our hearts, you know, we, we can begin to see ourselves changing from that old human nature that we don't want to be anymore. And last night, the, one of the biggest things, too, that went along with when something like this happens is the temptation to worry. My stomach tightening up. Running through all these things in my head. Worry. That's another thing he's had to help me with. And I remembered it came into my mind. He is in control. I've shared about that lately. He keeps reminding me of it. You have to know that I'm in control. I hope I'm not jumping around too much. And I'm going to be turning this off here in a minute. But I had to, so how, what do you, how do you reckon with that word that you've heard? In my case, you have to remember God is in control. So when this situation comes that takes me by surprise, troubles me, wants to worry me, how do I take that what the Lord's, that word he's given me to hold on to and bring that situation into that? How do I do that in a situation? Well, I have to think. This situation came about. It took me by surprise, but it did not take the Lord by surprise. Right? Um, and I have to remember that even in this situation that just happened, as awful as it may be, He is over it. He is in control. Know what I mean? Um... Try to be still. Try to learn. Try to listen for the Lord in this situation. Bring all your worries and cares and troubles to Him. So that was in one way He helped me last night. In another way, as I was, my mind was kind of chewing on the details of this situation that had happened, I could feel just this ugh, anger or disgust or just all those things towards that person and I remember I said Lord how I need to pray I didn't really want to so the Lord had to help me go his way to actually do it rather than my own way which was to be mad maybe ignore them think bad things about them and all this kind of stuff he helped me to go his way and what he gave me to think about, and I shared this a long time ago, but I'm going to share it again, 
is, you know, the scripture says, don't boast over the branches that were broken off. You're hearing Christ standing by faith. That one was broken off because of unbelief or whatever. And he said, don't boast over them. Because if he grafted you in to his tree, it was unnatural to do. How much more will he be willing to graft those broken off branches back in? So in this situation, I thought, well, it just came to me. Misty, don't think you're better. Look down on. Boast yourself over that person you think is the enemy right now. And the job they did. And how they messed up and all that. Don't think you're better. Humble yourself. Put yourself in that situation. What if you had acted that way out of anger? What if you were full of anxiety of things you've been going through lately. And you lashed out in anger. And you did the wrong thing. And you were irrational. That could be you. So think from that point of view. Think about that person. From that place. And then pray for them. And you know I didn't even know how to pray. But I just prayed for mercy. And really just was kind of quiet and just trusting that the Spirit was praying to the Father for me, for this person. Trying to sympathize. What if that were you? What if you had done that? Wouldn't you hope somebody would forgive you? Wouldn't you hope somebody would show you some mercy? Wouldn't you hope somebody would plead with the Lord on your behalf to help you not keep being this way and doing this? And I, and I prayed for my family member that was hurt. And the Lord helped me to pray for the one that hurt them. How hard is this? Impossible to do by our own strength. We don't have enough goodness in our hearts for that. That takes the kindness and love and mercy of the Lord working through us to accomplish His will. Serving and loving others as ourself. So I hope that makes sense what I shared. And I, I just do thank you Lord. For helping me. And it's not like thoughts don't try to come back and gnaw at me. To be mad or judge or whatever. But Lord please help me to go your way in the way I think. Please help me to learn what I'm to learn. To be impartial. Not favoring one over the other. You said don't favor the rich over the poor. You know. Don't judge things from the outward. Trust me that I see what's going on inwardly. Trust me that I'm in control. And that's what I ask you to help me do. And help anybody that needs it today. To help us remember that you are in control, Lord. You are in control. And we cannot live up to who you are in our own strength and power. We need your help, Lord. And I know you'll answer us. You answer the cry for help. We need you. Thank you, Lord. So, I love y'all. I hope you have a good day. Thinking about you, praying for you. appreciate you. And you... Uh, comments you make, scriptures you share, and things you're going through. So, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.